Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunday video. Now, in the past two to three weeks, I've seen many comments uh, about people getting some form of upper respiratory illnesses lately. It's likely that you or someone you know in maybe in the middle of recovering from a cold, flu, or COVID. Now, if you are tired of keep taking medicines that only treats the symptom, I'm going to share a mother's recommendation for cold with you. No, it's not from my mother specifically, but from mother around the world. And there are scientific studies to support that recommendation. While we have drug treatments for the flu and coronavirus, we still don't have any specific drug treatment for the common cold. All the over-the-counter cold medicines only help with symptoms, such as temporarily suppressing coughing and runny nose. So what are common colds and why are they so common? The name tells you, common colds are common for several reasons. Number one, they are difficult to prevent and are most likely caused by rhinovirus or the nose virus. Other viruses we hear about these days, such as the RSV, adenovirus, and other human coronaviruses, can also cause common colds. And there are 100 different strings of different rhinovirus and adenovirus, so it's been impossible to make a vaccine to prevent it. Number two, they are hard to treat. While we have drug treatments for flu and coronavirus, we still don't have any specific drug treatments for common cold caused by the rhinovirus and adenovirus. All of the over-the-counter medicines only help with symptoms and suppressing those that we talked about, such as coughing and runny nose. Number three, they are easy to spread. Sneezing, coughing, or even talking can spread the common cold virus as we move away from COVID preventative measures and resume normal lives, common cold viruses have regained their ways to spread in the community. So we treat the symptoms, but sometimes they fail, and it is not without risk. We have cough suppressants, fever, pain medicines, and antihistamines. These meds can make people feel better when the drugs are in the body or in the system. But as soon as the drugs wear off, symptoms return, and people would need to take another dose to suppress those symptoms in order to feel better before a full recovery. For example, acetaminophen or paracetamol has a 4 gram daily limit for healthy people. Now, exceeding that limit can cause serious damage to the liver, and people with a lowered liver function from chronic liver diseases can tolerate even less than 4 grams daily. NSAIDs, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and naproxen, are processed through the kidney and could be dangerous for chronic kidney disease patients. On the other spectrum of the population, more sedating antihistamines such as Benadryl or diphenhydramine and aspirin are also dangerous for some children. At selected age. So what can really treat a cold? A bowl of hot chicken soup from mom. Uh, wait, wait a second. Are you kidding me, Dr. Han? Uh, a bowl of chicken soup? Seriously? I was expecting more. That may be what you were thinking. Now, let me explain. When I say a bowl of hot chicken soup, it's not about the chicken, it's not about the broth, it's not about the spice, the celery, the noodle, the rice that is making the difference. It is the steam, or more precisely, the warmer temperature from the steam. Symptomatically, steam carries high moisture that can help break up the congestion in the sinuses, which can help a person to breathe better. But the deeper science relates to how temperature activates the innate immune system to defend against common cold virus. So it does not matter if you are getting a bowl of chicken soup or brown broth, as long as it's steamy hot and the steam gets into your nasal cavity, some immune process is going to happen. And let's look at the science. Let's look at study number one. 
Rhinoviruses are better at replicating in colder temperatures. Researchers have always known that rhinoviruses survive better in the cooler temperature found in the nose, which is between 91.4 to 95 Fahrenheit or 33 to 35 degrees Celsius. In a 2015 paper published in the Top Tier Journal, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, researchers at Yale University School of Medicine reported this finding. They exposed a string of rhinovirus to mouse airway cells at lower temperatures and higher temperatures, and saw that rhinovirus could not replicate at higher temperatures. The higher temperature triggered airway cells to produce an antiviral substance called interferon, which limited the rhinovirus's ability to replicate. This is one of the first pieces of evidence showing how higher temperatures activate the innate immunity in the airway. Study number two: Lower temperature stabilizes influenza virus structure. In 2008, researchers from the National Institution of Health discovered that at temperatures slightly above freezing and below, which is the typical late fall and early winter temperature for the majority of North America and Europe, the virus's lipid covering solidified into a gel. And even at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, the covering was still mostly in the gel form. The researchers believed that the gel-like coating allows the virus to withstand cooler temperatures and travel from person to person. And when the temperature is near or above 105 Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, most of the lipid coat turns to liquid form, and the virus loses the ability to spread. In study number three. Colder temperatures further lowered innate immunity in the nose. A new study just published in early December reinforced the finding of the two older studies. The researchers measured the nasal temperatures of healthy human volunteers at ambient temperature of 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. And 40 Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius, they saw that the nasal cavity temperature dropped by about 9 Fahrenheit in colder conditions. And they put the nasal cell samples in a similar lowered temperature in the lab, and saw a decrease in the innate immune response. Specifically, the innate immune system toll-like receptor 3 or TLR3 dependent nasal cell. Extracellular vesicles were blunted by cooler temperatures. Now, examples of toll-like receptors is that they are part of the innate immune system that can recognize pathogen-associated pattern or molecules that are commonly found on viruses or bacteria. After recognition by the toll-like receptors, it will initiate a cascade of innate immune response that can stop the virus from propagating. Or replicating in the nasal cavity. Overall, all three of these studies support the central idea of how we are easier to get an upper respiratory infection in the winter time. And one way to effectively fight diseases like the common cold is to boost the nose's innate immune response. And warmer temperature in the nose appear to be one possible way to do that. It's interesting that many natural remedies for cold are hot liquids, and this knowledge has been passed down for many generations in different cultures. But we are only recently seeing scientific evidence to support these old traditions. So I think sometimes we cannot totally dismiss or ignore our ancestors' wisdom. Remember. Some of them are wise enough to survive without modern medicines, and so that we are here in today's world. That is all for this week. But before we wrap up, I want to bring up this comment from Red Rose. She is a mom from Hong Kong, and she make chicken bone broth for her family when they have cold. Now it's very encouraging to have comments like this on the channel. Well. That's everything. For those of you who watch World Cup, I'm getting out of here, and so that you can watch the final. And thank you again for watching this week. And 
stay warm. Take care. Bye.